Hey DJ Tech Tools, Mr. 415 here. Uh, been playing with this mapping for a while now, and uh, figured I'd kept it all to my uh, kept it to myself long enough. So uh, upload it, let you all enjoy it. Um, this is a four deck tractor mapping for push. It's all in one single TSI. Um, pretty much, just really enjoying having four decks at my fingertips. Um, I can basically hit play on all four decks at once, or jump around key points, do all kinds of fun stuff like that. Uh, just been really uh, loving the um, four deck workflow that is uh, provided for me. Uh, we have deck A, B, C, and D. Each one has two columns. I'll go through them at once. Uh, there is no EQ um, mapping functions of this uh, particular uh, setup, I've actually been uh, enjoying that a little bit. It's for uh, mixing with just filters, which are up here, um, and I'll get to in a minute. Uh, it's actually kind of forcing me to be creative, but if you want to um, add uh, EQ to your setup, um, there's plenty of controllers out there. I'm using a bitstream, or I've been using a bitstream over here. Um, I have an APC40, which actually works pretty well for EQ. There's a Behringer MM1 that I just got in uh, that I've been having a lot of fun with. Really solid controller. I'll hopefully be uploading the mapping for that at some point. Um, but yeah, so just basic, uh, almost a DBS style kind of uh, play uh, control scheme, uh, not including the play functions. Um, anyway, so just starting from the bottom, we have play, pause, that blinks along with the BPM, which is kind of fun. Let's you know if one of your tracks is out of sync. Um, Sync is right there, all four, just set those. Um, the play button is shift, uh, so it's modifier one, value one. If you hold that and hit the sync button, that will set the um, track to master. There's no LED feedback on it, but um, that would now be the master track. Um, up next, there we have loop on and off. Um, if you hold shift, that's loop in, loop out. Um, then loop length up here, so that goes all the way up to 32, obviously. Um, these change uh, whenever you change the loop length. Um, the, I didn't really plan out, there's no, really, there's no way to really plan out which colors correspond to which values uh, loop length. Um, that's more just in the MIDI, uh, kind of the way that the push handles uh, LED out, MIDI out. Uh, but it is nice because you can see that you've changed the loop length. Um, up on top of that, we have beat jump. Um, this, uh, if you hold shift um, and hit those, it increases or decreases. Um, this jumps forward, this jumps back. I didn't uh, set up a uh, LED feedback on that other than forward and back, just light dark. Um, just because I don't really need to, see, I'm, I'm okay not seeing that. Um, I value the actual. Um, just be you know, forward and back and light dark and maintain that. Anyway, you can change that if you like. Um, up here we have the cue point section, uh, which um, has a different color set up for each deck. So if I drop a track with all four or all eight cue points in it, it'll light the whole thing up. Um, I can delete those cue points or add them back in. Um, hold it again, holding shift. Um, then up here we have. Uh, tempo change. It's not um, super set, like it won't change a lot. Um, the the value, the increments um, by which it adjusts are pretty small. Um, again, you can change that on the mapping if you like. I don't need to make huge immediate tempo changes um, too often, so that works for me. Uh, here we have load. Um, Add some cue points there. Uh, same track on here, so that actually mirrors on those two decks. Um, so yeah, that's load. Um, this is your headphone select, so your monitor cue in. If you hold shift, you have flux mode there, um, and both of those blink, just to let you know. Um, then coming over here, we have the uh, browser uh, only toggle that will blink when it's um, in browser only mode. If you hold shift and hit that, it's not gonna blink right now. Um, that actually toggles through your layout. So if you use layouts a lot like I do, um, that'll come in useful. Um, but normally it'll just do the you know, browser only. Um, 
underneath that on the click wheel, the little click encoder is actually your, um, is your browser select. Um, if you hold shift on that, it'll actually scroll through your tree. Um, and then if you are in your tree um, looking at a uh, folder, regardless of shift, uh, regardless of holding down modifier one, this, uh, the metronome button will expand or collapse that particular button or that particular folder. Um, so that's handy. Um, next right here, uh, the smaller, the swing, the swing knob, the smaller knob next to the click encoder, um, is actually, actually controls your, uh, cue mix. So your headphone mix. Um, so if you have one of these blinking, turn it all the way to the left. That's, uh, your cued channel. You turn it all the way to the right. That's your master, uh, shift turning that. That's actually your headphone volume adjust, which is uh, handy. Uh, coming to the main knobs up here, we have um, uh, two per channel. First one is filter. Fun little thing I actually found um, uh, that I was able to do is um, if you have your filter up, when you hold down this second modifier, but when you hold down the record, that's a uh, second modifier, I think it's modifier one, value two, and tap that filter knob, because it's touch sensitive, it'll actually just jump it back, jump the value back to zero. So I have it set up almost as a button to set the filter back to zero. So if you're doing, which can be kind of handy. Um, if you hold uh, shift and your modifier one, value one, and adjust the filter knob, that adjusts your gain on your channel. And I set it, the encoder sensitivity to 50%, um, just because I didn't need it jumping in gain super high. Um, you can, and again, go into the mapping and change that if you like. Uh, the second knob is, um, actually functions as a jog wheel. I haven't been able to pull off uh, too many scratches with that yet. Um, I usually main, I'm, I mostly just use it for nudging. Um, so, you know, touching the platter on a, on a techniques, for example. Um, then if you hold shift on that one, that's actually the val, that's the, uh, volume adjust. So hold shift. I haven't mapped anything to um, any touch things for the for that second knob. Um, maybe I will do that in updated mapping. I just haven't had a need for it yet. And then the master volume knob on the push does the same thing in Ableton, or the same thing in this mapping as it does in Ableton. So that's your that's your master volume. Uh, be careful with that. I ha I sh will adjust the sensitivity on that so it's not like a normal knob. Um, it doesn't blast your speakers out. Uh, it's just with a little touch. That should be about it. Um, leave any comments in the um, comment section down below. Suggestions, criticisms, questions, ideas. Um, and uh, that should be, yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, that's my four deck mapping for Ableton Push in Tractor, full LED feedback. I'm really liking this setup. This is basically going to be my main setup. So if anyone wants to uh, buy a Denon DNMC 6000 with flight case uh, still works. <laughs> Let me know. Uh, but yeah, uh, feel free to download this, uh, mess with it, do whatever you like, post up and edit. Um, this is for you, DJ Tech Tools. Uh, this is Mr. 415, uh, Tractor Ableton Push 4 Deck Mapping. <laughs>